is bronze. I could be wrong. And so that. wouldn't that then make that. sense that the way that the bad thoughts would have to get into us was through this, right? So like COVID wouldn't have existed without the internet. And oh, the definitely people, wouldn't have. Well, sure. So the the mimetic viruses, the mimetic ideas are transported via this very anti kingdom like like kingdom connection right that we we all that the saints mm-hmm. you know are, are working their whole lives and we should be to kind of clean the port this anti that would be the thing that that is the vehicle by which such heinous ideas as covid and transgenderism and all this different stuff would come to us and the people who really promote those ideas are influencers so it's almost like oh, you can see you the manifestation Demons of the demons the physical manifestations of the demons being used by the anti kingdom to mm-hmm. transport ideas that are insulting and blasphemous to god in a very real and like the matrix is real i'm just saying it's it's well it's i don't th- i don't think it's the internet per se but i i think it's i think it's social media and they're two different things like the internet is like the technology i think that's relatively like Benign, benign, not even really benign, but like neutral. But I think it's specific because everything started to go wrong with social media. Before that, the Internet was totally like everybody was like, this is this thing is great. Yeah, this thing is awesome. Like, it's actually making us better. It's actually making us smarter. And it was. And then social media came along and every and, and just the wheels fell off. Do you know the wheels yeah, fell off? I saw a shirt I was very tempted to buy. And it was like social media was the worst this creation like man ever made or something like that. Like I'd agree. Would, like, I would I would buy that shirt and absolutely wear it. So anyway, it just occurred to me. I mean it came it occurred to me at one of those times where I was trying to explain something to someone and it just came to me. And that's how I get a lot of my opinions, is just like that, like it's almost like I'm journaling aloud to someone, and that's how like I let mm-hmm. stuff come to me. So it came to me and I was like Yeah, cool. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Father in Cyprian, just as, you know, just a little humble, little humble thing. If you guys don't want to answer it, that's okay. I'll lead with mine. But what was one of maybe to predictions 2020 that you made that was completely wrong, that you were just straight up wrong about? Because I got mine. Because okay. I thought I by think I 20, got it. yeah, I thought by 20, I, I am on, uh, like, uh, I'm on food stamps. My prediction was we had just gotten it. Cause we had just had enough kids to qualify. I was like, we are not going to get more than three months because they're going to require something of me that I'm not willing to do. And so I, we started stocking up a ton of food and thank God it's still there, but now it's just kind of sitting in my basement, you know, kind of like in some containers and stuff which is cool but we're like we're not going to get this much longer so we just got to do it while we can so we kind of went crazy a little bit there that's never been an issue that that's not not even ever even breathed a word about it so completely wrong about that mine was it it was early it was probably it well it would have had to been march of 2020 because there aren't a lot that I could think of that were just flat out wrong. But this one was flat out wrong. I, in March of 2020, when they started national, uh, mobilizing National Guardsmen to answer to the whole COVID thing, I predicted that there would be uh, civil war type clashes between the states or at least that certain states would shut their borders off to other states like specifically california wouldn't allow in people from arizona 
etc. Didn't sure. happen. Didn't happen. So that was yeah, I was dead wrong about that one. That was an early prediction. Yeah. I really thought UBI was going to be here sooner. Yeah, I did too. Like I really, <laughs> really thought UBI was going to be here by yeah. now. You know, universal basic income, yeah. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I was right on that train with you, Father. I was right there. It's oh, oh, me too. Yeah, yeah I thought too. Build Back America or Build Back America Better or whatever it was. I thought that was it because wasn't that part of it? Joe wanted to talk yeah. about doing like a mm-hmm. family credit or something mm-hmm. every. So I thought that was it. I was like, this is the proto UBI. Yeah. So, and I, yeah, that was another one. I, yeah. I told my sister January of 2021, I was like, this is basically already here. Like the, the bill back better than when the vote was mm-hmm. happening. I was like, this is already one. This is all just ceremony. They're just making it look official, but this is already policy. I was completely wrong about that I was, I was right with you i wonder if the war in ukraine and them having to print so many bi- hundreds of billions of dollars to send over to ukraine delayed the ubi but isn't the ubi I the wonder. point is to okay i'm showing my ignorance here isn't it the point is to make money electronic so wouldn't the printing not really impact that too much? Or does those... Well, I mean, it's a print, printing is... a Yeah, printing is just a, you know... Okay. Quote, quote yeah. unquote. But I think just the appropriations of money, you know, that like... That's a... It's a, been a lot of money that's been sent over there, man. A lot yeah. of money. They that would have definitely it. done it. That would have definitely... You could have done UBI with that money that was sent over there. Have you heard this theory that modern art anyway is just a way of money laundering? That like nobody's actually paying $9 million for this like sculpture of like a banana or whatever. I mean, I think it's fairly plausible. Like, you know, I don't know what what person is coming along and like buying up some of the stuff I see. Like, have you guys seen that? It's like a meme now of that guy who's painting on the wall, but he like jumps on a trampoline. Yes. Like, oh, he's painting yes. and then like just turns around and walks back and just does it again. And who knows, you know, maybe that's sold. I'm not sure. But um, you know, just could maybe, be maybe, like contem- money contemporary money. art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's I yeah. bet there's something to that because I mean art was stolen a lot during wars. Mm-hmm. Like art was stolen a lot. So I wonder if that was you know, maybe there was even something going on back then. I don't know. I don't really understand. I don't even know if I know what money laundering is, to be honest. Like, I'm not sure I understand the concepts behind it's it. Where, it's where you take money from a uh, an illegal enterprise and then you spend it at a legitimate, within a legitimate business, but the accounting is like goofy. And so then when it comes out of the legitimate business, it looks as though it went through the... So for instance, like... The big ones are things like casinos, strip clubs, anywhere where you have like massive amounts of cash that comes in that you could account for it in the books as whatever. Oh, this was somebody got, uh, you know, a $5,000 table at a nightclub. Right. But it's not. It's just somebody just handed you $5,000 and then the nightclub keeps a certain percentage and then they give the rest to whoever the person who gave them the five, the, the, the five grand. Sure. That's money laundering. Yeah. So you're so you're you're cleaning the money basically. Yeah, a fake paper trail is basically yeah. what you're doing. Okay. okay. And it's almost always with cash. It can only well, really be done with cash. It have to be with cash, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 There's a, I'm surprised that you haven't watched the show Ozark. No, it's too violent for me. That's what it's about. In- Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, then yeah. I don't get it. He's a, because... he's, a, he's, a, he's a money launderer, and he goes and buys... He's like a professional money launderer. Jason Bateman or whatever the guy's yeah. name is. I don't know the actor's name. So yeah, he goes yeah. to the Ozarks, and he buys a bunch of like, like a hotel, a strip club, a dock, and marina, all of these things sure. to launder the cash through these things in the Ozarks. Sure. Yeah. No, I haven't seen it. And... yeah. I'm I'm off of like violent TV like that. That's just Sabrina. Come on, I got repenting to do. 
I don't need to be watching. <laughs> stuff, so. I, I, it's been so long, dude. So many years no, like I ago. Know. I don't I even know. remember if it was violent, to be honest. I guess it probably is. Oh, yeah, yeah. it is. I've, I've oh, yeah, heard... it starts out actually super violent. I think there's two murders in the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that would, that's too, too many. Come to think so. of it. Yeah, come to think of it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, gents, what you got on the, what you got on the mind to talk about? So here's here's what uh, here's a question that I had, and I think it'll be a good jumping off point, especially for what Father and I were talking about before you you jumped on, Andrew. <laughs> Father, we have talked about this a few times, but it's been quite a while. And by the way, guys, this is show number one hundred. Oh, so, yeah! Wow! All yeah! Right. Da, 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 da. Four hour long the pop. The yeah. four hour <laughs> long episode. <laughs> right. We're okay, do, we're gonna do a double one. So, so, so oh. here is what here is what it is. So, first, I'll give you the context of why I I feel why this has been coming up for me, and it's father. It's sort of related to something that we were talking about, just in terms of the weirdness of everything that's going on. But because uh, one of the things that it's been feeling like to me in this strange way, and I don't even know how to how to put it, but basically, I feel almost as though we did a reset almost like the great reset happened. And now we've reset back to 2016. Yeah. Like almost everybody has forgotten everything that happened in the last eight years as though it like didn't even exist. And like, we're right back to 2016. And I'm like, okay, this is strange. There's a reset before that too. We went back to 2020 right before this because right. so th- we're- there's a list there's a list of it go- so we're going backwards in time like each election cycle is like a cycle and we just keep going backwards so now we're back up to the second cycle so okay so here's so here's the question and this is why it came to me is getting into the relationship of god's judgment and repentance and specifically like i always go back into the context of nineveh and we talked about this one time and it was profound to me. And I was hoping that we could go back, back over it because it was a while. It may have been episode 50. This idea that people are doing whatever they're doing. They're taking these actions. Then is God's judgment. Then is like the prophet sort of comes and delivers the judgment or in some ways that people become aware of the judgment. And then there is the opportunity for repentance. And then if there is a lack of repentance, then what is the, is that called God's punishment? I know he's removing himself. He's removing his, his favor, Mm -hmm. but can we, can you father, can you help me again? Just like, can we walk through that? Because what it feels like to me right now and why this has come up is like, I'm looking The reason why it feels like we went back to 2016 is I'm looking at all the people and who they are putting as their champions. And I'm like, don't, are you just going to ignore everything that person did against your self-interest and your best interest? And even the ideology that you're spouting right now for the last eight years, you're just going to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't even happen. And I feel like it's that lack of repentance, even in ourselves of like, was I even wrong about it? What is the, it's just like, they just, they're just like, nope, 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 nope. Right. And so I just wanted to understand so that I could better place this whole thing. Does that make sense? Kind of. I mean, okay. Something that I, I kind of stress a lot, like in the parishes, we are the people of God. We are the people of God. We're the people of God, you know? And it's it's one of the major problems with both the intentional ecumenism and the kind of de facto ecumenism that isn't maybe necessarily as um, nefarious, but it's insidious, right? So... It's really difficult because on the one hand, and try to bring me back if I get too out to, you know, too out to see on this, but I've been, I've I've been thinking a lot about this recently in regards of 
you know, the whole Christ is King movement. And yes, the algorithm curates things, and, and I understand that. But it seems outside of that, that there's this groundswell or this, not even groundswell, but there's like a, there's a critical mass of people, you know, professing faith in Christ. I'll just kind of give an example. Today, I was kind of sitting with that Russell Brand prayer with Tucker Carlson, trying to understand things, you know? And, you know, I'm saying to myself, okay, it's like, on the one hand, checking my own issues, my own immaturity, my own passions, right? Like, am I just being that scene kid who's like, oh, now you want to be in on it? You know what I mean? Just, yeah, just, I was walking through the process, right? Okay. So it's like, it's not that, but then there's this other side where it's like the biggest temptation is just to, you know, kind of let up and just not, you know, open up the filter too much, right? It's it's just, it's difficult. So I, I'm thinking about this and I'm just thinking about how so much of this is happening and it's kind of like for us, <clears throat> there's this weird tension that we carry being orthodox in the new world, right? Um, where, yeah, we can't act like we have exclusive rights on God, but we kind of do. Are you, are you are you following me so far? So since yeah, we're, we're in this tension, and oh, heavenly King, Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, whatever our present, fill us all things, right? So. God is everywhere working with everybody. But at the same time, not everyone can call him father. And that's part of the thing I'm talking about with this ecumenism. It's like everyone has this idea that, you know, God's my father. God's my father. But not, but not everyone has God as, as their father. The Lord says, many in that day, well, you know, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy your name, do we not cast out demons in your name, right? On and on. You know, here is your mother and your brothers. Who are my mothers and my brothers but those who do the will of, of the Father? Right? On and on and on. Gospel of Matthew, right? So much about who is truly a child of, my fa of, of the Heavenly Father. What does that mean? Right? And the reason why I'm saying that is because God deals differently with his people versus like the rest of the world. Right. So the judgment, and, and this is super unpopular. This is, this is super unpopular, but it's one of the reasons why someone should say, isn't it just good enough for me to kind of be an internet ortho person and kind of flirt with it and whatever. Why do I really actually need to, to, you know, do the work to actually convert and live by the precepts of the church? Why does it even bother? Why, why does it even matter, right? Especially in these days where, you know, it's really in vogue to just want to be trad, conservative, based, like all the stuff. That's, that's, that's the vogue thing, right? Not even just the right thing. It's the vogue thing. In, in many ways. But the problem is, is that, you know, like it says, I believe it's in, um, forgive me, I believe it's in, uh, I think it's in, it's in one of the epistles of Peter, maybe second Peter, but a judgment comes to the house of God first. Judgment comes to the house of God first. And, you know, I, I'm not sure people understand that. I think that people have this mindset that, um, you know, the the arc the arc affords you certain things, yes, but there's a certain um, there are certain things that you don't want to be immune to, like the chastisement of the Lord. You don't want to duck, 
And so when we're talking about judgment and God's wrath and like all, all, all those things, like what does that mean? I, I just, we have to start with, you know, the house of the Lord, the people of God. Who are the people of God? Who are Israel? So Orthodox Christians, we are. Right? And if you don't have that presupposition first, then this gets really difficult to navigate with any, with any meaningful movement. It all just becomes like sling and hash and who cares, right? But like the unpopular, uncomfortable truths are we have to have that presupposition. That's part of our problem. That's part of the judgment that came to us in, in 2020 is that people who really didn't believe that, who felt that that's not the right approach, that's, that's where they began to get shaken out. That's interesting, Father, that you that you bring that up for 2020. And I understand what you're saying, because like it's not metaphorical that it would come to the house of God first. Like it literally in 2020 came first because the first the first places that had to make the hard decision about this was it was the parishes Mm -hmm. for sure, like but more so than. Harder decisions than any store had to make or any a- event place or any anything. There's, there's literally no one that you're going to name that had to deal with the pressures that parishes had to deal with. Right? Because somebody would say, oh, no, the schools, the libraries, the whatever. It's like, what? They just went to Zoom and that was locked and loaded. And it was ready and it didn't matter. And to go along with that trajectory, the parishes and like the, the evangelical churches, all the, all the churches, they could do that and it didn't matter for them either. The only people it mattered and for... Joel, Joel Osteen had a nobody in there. He was all by just, himself on he stage. Didn't, he didn't need to. He just didn't need to. to. Just a sidestep to clickety-clacky, I can already hear. Father is again talking about the institutions. It did not really affect the institutions. It affected the people who are maybe relying on that stuff. Just yeah. because I can already hear, well, no, the students suffered. Well, we know the students suffered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Know that Thank you, Andrew. People suffered, but that's, the institution itself. Thank you. I, I appreciate you doing that because it's, right, in order to kind of keep moving, we have to, there's certain, there's certain givens here that are tough, right? But it is what it is, right? But that's a given, and I'm glad you brought that up. That's one of those givens, right? Talking about Sometimes our givens are not. Sometimes right. our givens are very, very scrutinized. But anyway, I so, digress. So with that being said, it's like, okay. <clears throat> and, you know, we were, we were on that journey together in the sense of, you know, lamenting and, and, and struggling and feeling the pain of everything that happened post, you know, reset and COVID and everything. And then, you know, I, I don't remember it was, I think it was definitely by that long before 22, somewhere during 21, it was like, oh, this is a blessing. Oh, this is a blessing. You know what I mean? This is a blessing. But what, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to point that this what I and I may be misunderstanding where you were going with, with the Cyprian, but what I'm trying to get no, at this is, is it's on the right it's on the right path. Yeah, like the judgment of God for us is something like you want. For us, we we want that judgment, we want that chastisement because if we are the people of God and He's our God, we're not pagans who just want to appease the God and give the offering to whichever God's just going to give us our, our appetites, then we trust that he's good. And even these difficult things are given to us so that we would be like him. Right. Cause we, we want to transcend the limitations of ourselves. Right. And we can only do that by becoming like him. So we begin to see that the chastisements, although real and painful are ultimately good. That the judgments that are though real, painful, and deserved, by the way, that's the other thing is deserved. Right? What here's another thing. What's the difference between the just and the unjust? They they both get rained upon. Well, the difference is the the just, they got the water container and they, they use the water for, you know, doing dishes and making, you know, hooking up their shower and doing everything else. And the and the unjust are just mad that they're getting wet. That's that's the, that's the difference. So I think the people kind of by and large who aren't learning those lessons are the people that didn't appreciate the judgment for what it was. 
they didn't appreciate the chastisement of of the Heavenly Father. And then I would say to them, you may not be, you may not have him as your father. I, and the, I, I know it's tough. I know it's tough. But you may not have him as your father. Um, because somebody's wrong. That's why when we get into all these subjective arguments, ecumenism, or your tradition, this tradition, like, you guys just can't have the whole, you know, heck, you can't have the whole God thing on lockdown, there's many paths, all this stuff. It's like, one of us is wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you start looking at the world events, and how are the world events and your quote-unquote interpretation of the world events, which include how is God playing into those things? Because I'm going to say this to you guys in, in a way that I don't know if this is going to make sense and I'm being super sincere. If I'm not making sense or I'm just kind of like out to sea, please just say, hey, you're out to sea, Father, right? But from my perspective, what I have found is I speak to all kinds of people and there's this kinship because we share the same experience and insight to these things, these judgments of God. Now, someone's going to say, yeah, duh, that's just how communities work, right? Like everyone has, they share their, their experiences. What I'm trying to say is the totality of these experiences in the light of the judgment of God, the judgment of God being there for people's repentance, being there to bring people to this transcendent understanding of yourself as an individual, your family, your community, humanity, you know what I mean? And understanding that those very things that the most of the world is just lamenting and we need to fight against all this, it's like, those are actually, you know, God has allowed these things to come for the benefit, but it's, it's how do you usually judge it? Well, it's, if the world is liking something, then it's probably bad, right? If the world's upset about something, then it's probably beneficial. I mean, just I mean, I'm I'm just trying to reduce it down in a simple way for people to kind of get what I'm trying to say. But I think discerning what is a prophet? Prophet is the one one who's discerning the word of the Lord. What is the word of the Lord? The word of the Lord is that he wishes that none of the the wicked he wishes that none would perish, but that all would come to have everlasting life. Well, how does that happen? Right. It doesn't happen by giving people what they desire. That's how people perish. That's what the demons do. So part of the problem with, for, not with your question, but part of the problem with discerning that is we get back to some of these things, which, you know, I mean, I, I've learned this firsthand. Like we were just talking about earlier, being a dad, being a spiritual father, doing this show interacting with people. I you know and and Andrew said I've learned firsthand. I don't know if I'm just salty tonight, but I am learning, man, what I thought would just be givens and assumptions, I just can't assume they're givens. I don't I don't I've been having these conversations with people about you know, I I personally am trying to find ways to communicate with people because you know, I'm starting to understand old people. I'm starting to, I'm starting to understand my dad a lot a lot more these days because I know this feels like this diatribe and a rant, but you know, okay, whatever. I'm I'm old, but what I'm trying to get at is there are things now that are so clear to me that they don't they don't you know it's like they're so clear to me that they are the hand of God in regards of you know, the call for repentance, the chastisement, the judgment, however you want to look at it, just on a, on a bigger scale. These things are so clear to me. And I remember the days when they weren't that clear, but now I'm just looking back I'm like, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you talking about? My papa and I were talking about this. We've talked about this a bunch of times before. We were just reflecting on like Al Bundy and like Homer Simpson. And, like, and there was kind of like a bigger context to ever, but I was like, I mean, yeah, if 
if we as a society intentionally choose to rip up our own life raft, yeah. like the family structure and like if we begin to just, you know, the pulling down the patriarchy and like all that stuff and like I I I get it, right? I get that there was abuses and we and I get all those things, but at the same time I'm looking back on how unnatural and how forced. You know, if you're honest with yourself, you look back on your adolescence and your early adulthood, especially if you're an addict or especially if like you had, you know, problems, you know, lots of bad relationships or, you know, whatever the thing is, you know, you're from the, you find those moments where you're like, it wasn't, I wasn't just off the chain and ignorant and a dumb kid. I was like, I was purposely choosing the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. 100%. I resemble that comment. Like I was purposely, 100%. purposely choosing purposely. the the wrong thing, right? One hundred percent. And I think that, and I think for me, like in my life now, looking back, right? Because I'm almost fifty. Looking back on my life, and you know, again, the generation I was born in, it's like that's probably one of the biggest differences out of everything: being in Christ, being Orthodox. Never mind being a priest. Just being in Christ, being Orthodox, is that I go, I don't want to live my life intentionally doing the wrong thing. I don't want to live my life intentionally being indifferent to people. I just, I don't want to be that guy. And I was that guy. And here's the thing. Lots of people are that guy. Watch this. I'm not talking about the monkey pox spreading homosexual. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about people who want to be like, you know, quote unquote, soldiers for the good thing. This is what I'm talking about. See, everyone can be, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, remember guys, I'm always talking, trying to address the people who like are already Christians or or think they're Orthodox or like, Hey, this orthodoxy thing's cool, right? That's 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 why we exist, right? I'm just like, I'm talking about those people. Because this orientation of this orientation of the Beatitudes, right? Um that is becoming increasingly hard to live out now. Not just in the world. Not just in the world. I'm talking about that's becoming increasingly hard to live out in the broader church culture. Because if you start really trying to do that and to live for that, you're going to have people looking at you sideways. Meaning fellow quote-unquote Orthodox Christians. Yes, yes. That's Again, all this may sound like whatever, okay, duh, until I'm telling you like, no, no, I'm talking about Orthodox Christians. Right, People, but there's yeah. a, and and the corollary, Father. The corollary is that there is I under the the movement that you're talking about about the, these soldiers for whatever. There's very few people looking askance at that, which is ironic. Yeah, it's yeah, it's least. ironic that like you would get looked askance at for really living, trying to orient toward the beatitudes, but trying to orient towards some this something else thing. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. looking askance. And 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 I think the thing for me is like cuz again, just some things that people may not realize like I'm not a pacifist. I'm not a pacifist. Um but I do say you have to have the right culture if you want to be in Christ's kingdom. You can't have your kind of culture and then slap a slap a you know three bar sticker on it and be like, hey, this is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There there's a way that getting back to what I was talking about, like there is a way that families should relate to each other. Right? It, it's it's not as narrow as some people want to make it, for sure. But at the same time, you know, there, there are some things that just, okay, like, we have to agree on this. This is what Christ taught. This is what the apostles taught. This is what the church has, has laid down. And so 
bring it back to what you're talking about, Super, and maybe you know I'm off, but it's like. Who gets judged and why do they get judged? Well, the house of God gets judged first because they're the house of God. The people of God are the ones who are supposed to be manifesting to the world. The heart of God, God's character, God's love. And I don't mean God's kumbaya. I mean, this is God's love is like, hey, this this is this path is death. This path is life. Right. But then you move past that and it's like, well, you know. God begins to remove himself, right? God begins to allow. Here's another thing. There's there's some tough scriptures out there, you know? Um, And there's some tough sayings of the fathers. Like, you know, God will send a deceiving spirit. God will send a strong delusion to people. And we all saw that with COVID, but like, you think that's it? No, yeah. You think that's that's the only strong delusion that isn't, you know? For some of us, it wasn't even that strong. Like, we saw how strong it was for some people, but then that's what makes me, getting back to what I was trying to say, this makes me want to be like, okay, if that wasn't even that strong, what could really be coming that I need to just check myself on first? Father, so what you're saying is, is you've seen the predictions and the visions, and you're seeing Paul Atreides' army. You're already seeing, like, you're you're seeing, like, the, the jihad, already like you've seen like the people marching with banners of christ and stuff like the all in christ's or trump's or peterson's name or whatever and like they're not icons it could be icon or maybe it could be maybe it could be icons you know up on like the banisters or whatever but you're seeing like the jihad already start and you're like no the the spice is telling me you know that this is what's going to happen so you know well there was a there was this uh I think I I think I posted it into our chat. I don't know if you saw it the the video. It was from a couple of days ago, and I forget which channel put it up. But it was just uh, telling a story of Saint Paisios having this vision of a blonde Jesus, like the blonde oh, Jesus. I did I post I that in that. our chat? Yeah, no. Uh-uh. Oh I think I man, it's 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 so good, and it had me. It had, sort of had me laughing, and it was I was like, this is classic. But it basically Saint Paisios said that he was sitting in his cell and he heard music playing like really loud and he's like who's playing music and then he like walked outside and it kind of stopped and he walked back inside and it was playing again and he's like wait it's coming from in here and then all of a sudden the roof was gone and he was looking heavenward and like a blonde jesus descended down like into his cell a blonde blonde he was like i guess it was a blonde jesus and then he heard a voice say uh paisi you have been uh, chosen worthy to yeah. see me, yeah. and then he thought to himself, "Wait a minute, who am I? Who am I to be worthy? I'm, yeah. I'm not worthy to see. I'm not worthy to see Jesus." And everything vanished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, yes, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it, right? Yeah. And I feel like that's the embodiment right there. Yeah. And I love that it was a blonde Jesus. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I feel like that's that's it right there, and that's what nobody wants to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's tough because it's like again, I just it happened to be didn't know if we were going to talk tonight or not, right? It just but just today because that had been kind of circling around. Someone had sent that to me a while ago, and like I'll just. I'm not even trying to just hedge my bets. I'm just being really honest when I say this. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, everything was good. I'm talking about the Russell Brand prayer. Everything's good. You know, it's like it sounds okay, you know, whatever. Um, and like the tough thing is, the tough thing is, is we, the, even I'm, I'm sure it's like, oh, don't be black pill. Like even having that thought. You know what I don't like it because what it does it causes it causes the type of hesitation that can get you you know killed, and and that's that's like a real time thing for me right now because you know what I what do you mean hesitation thing like like when you are in combat right there's just these things where you start second guessing your intuition on things that's how you get killed that's how you get knocked out and then that's like, it you're done that's it yeah that's it when you and, and once yeah. you get knocked out or what's whatever like that's it because 
Once you go down and, you, and if you're out, you don't know what's going to happen to you. You know what I mean? So that's why these hesitations are tough. So, so anyways, while I'm working through this with everyone in real time, kind of, because they're going to hear this after the fact, but I'm like, yeah, you know, it's like, and we're all susceptible to it. And it's kind of like, yeah, don't be black pilled, all that stuff. But it's like, see, all those logos me, all those thoughts are what everyone's dealing with. And the problem with all these thoughts of like, well, what's the right way to be? And this and this and that. The problem with all those thoughts is it breaks our communion, our living communion with God. Because we're not thinking about, we're, we're just not looking to, we're not looking to Christ in the way that, you know, the tradition lays out to us. What I'm, what I'm trying to say here is like, when St. Paisios, like, he's like, oh, like, I'm not worthy. Like, why was he able to say that? Because he's infused with the energies of God because he's living in the tradition. And part of the tradition is like that, what we call self-accusation, that sobriety. Like, that is part of our culture. You remember when, do you remember, um, I remember, I, it doesn't matter. There was just a point in my in time when I was super deep in the libertarian thing. And then like, there was, the, there was this idea that government should have its own kind of, you know, self-destruct kind of like mechanism like built into it. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is the church kind of has that because the, the church of Christ, the, the bride of Christ, this isn't our home. So the utopianism, the Calaisism, right? Like these are the things that are, are becoming really hard for people to lose sight of. And I'm saying this, I'm trying to be charitable. I get it, right? But um, that's part of, from my perspective, what is, what is the true culture, right? What is that... that uh, meta culture, like how did how did the church survive the fall of Byzantium? How did the church survive, um, you know, uh, the Bolsheviks? And Soviets. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are these things? And and what I'm trying to say is, from what I've seen, you know, from what I've read, and from what I've seen with my own eyes, right. Um, and I'm thinking about certain movements. You know, I'm thinking about somebody like a Saint Nikolai Vedermovich. I'm thinking about Father Roman Braga, and I'm thinking about Tudor. I'm thinking about the the Burning Bush Brotherhood, you know, of Romania. Um, I'm thinking about you know other Romanian elders, you know, Father Justin Parvu. Like, I'm thinking about these catacomb confessors, you know. Um, of the catacomb church, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking about these things. I'm thinking about what was their orientation during all that time. And their orientation was a radical one. It was one that was, I'm not despondent. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to despair. And I'm definitely not going to, you know, sell my ticket to my real home for whatever you got going on here. So whatever happens in regards of, you know, God's judgment on Russia, because that's what communism was, right? The Bolshevik thing, that was God's judgment on Russia. Someone doesn't like what I'm saying, don't take it up with me. I don't want to talk. Don't, don't take it up with me. You take it up with St. John Maximovich. You take it up with St. John of Kronstadt. You take it up with St. Theophan and Clues. You take it up with them, right? Because that's what, that's, that's what they were saying. St. Sarah from Israel, you take it up with them. St. Zenia I mean, and St. Matrona both had visions of coming, like, correction. So. so, again, I know it feels like whatever, but if those who have ears to hear, let them hear. I am trying to say, to get to what, I, I don't know, again, I could be totally wrong, you know, I'm talking too much, I guess, but this is what I'm trying to answer what you're saying, Cyprian, because it's like, yes, it was the judgment of God, and Yes, it was difficult. But at the same time, the people of God, the real people of God, their response to it is very different than... I don't see 
and it's not for me to see right now because I'm assuming because I don't want to fall into the trap of Elijah. Remember, Elijah's like, "Oh, I alone, Lord, and, and faithful." He's like, "No, you're not. I got seven thousand other priests, right?" So, don't don't anyone misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying like, but when I say I don't see, I'm not saying I'm the only one or we're the. I'm just saying. I don't see, and it's kind of like on the larger scale, right? Because I know there's, you know, pretty much anyone who's kind of like our small audience, whatever, we'd all agree for the most part, sure. We got our own echo chamber, that's great. But like when I look out up, upon like the, the broader thing, it it does worry me. And it makes me feel like, you know, this is this is why it's like, ugh, talking about these things, um, can become, I think, tiresome for people. But the reality is, is that's how this works. Um, it's it's when you finally give up, like, like that's that's the running down of the clock, if, if that makes sense. What I'm saying, and so God allows these judgments and these other things to to keep us really kind of like vigilant and awake, like the wise virgins. That's one of the ways I'm seeing a lot of this is. Are, okay, are you staying awake? Is your lamp, you know, trimmed? What does that mean to have your lamp trimmed? Well, do you have the spirit? Well, what does it mean to have the spirit? Well, in this day and age, speaking of St. Paisios, he says, well, there really isn't the big ascetic feats anymore. Someone can pass up holy orthodoxy to their kids and their grandkids. That's your salvation. Okay, great. Someone says, Okay, that's no problem. Um, but then here's where the problem gets. Well, what is orthodoxy? Well, what does that mean? And that's, see, this is what I'm trying to get back to is, well, one of the ways to know if you're really looking at it from orthodox perspective is how do you see the events? Do you, where, where is that leading you? Is it leading you to want to <clears throat> have a utopia? Like, what is it, you know, what is it, what is it doing? And just to make it nice and spicy, to make it convoluted and, you know, just to make someone feel like I'm talking out both sides of my neck. Again, defense, laying down your life for your brother um, and definitely not calling evil good and good and evil. Like this is one of the things that is just as much a part of that. That's why it isn't just, it isn't the simple kind of lay, I'm not talking about lay down and die, quite the opposite, right? But there has to be a certain way in which you raise your children, in which you orientate yourself amongst your friends and amongst your community. Because my, from my perspective, when something hits, it's too late. Yeah. It's too late when everyone's scrambling because, oh, this event happened downtown. Like, forget the, forget like wherever. Like, I'm talking the event happened, stayed over. Like what? Like what are you going to do? What are you What are you going to do? Right. I think, Father, that was that was getting back to parishes, experiencing what they experience, and it is like that. Um, what's that? That 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 Niemöller poem or whatever. First they came. Like it's it. If someone were to just look at what what was being put upon by the power, what the powers that be were putting upon those who were attempting to maintain holy tradition mm -hmm. in early 2020, you could have seen everything that they were going to do to everyone within the next two years. It's almost like you didn't need, like you didn't even need, it wasn't even guessing. It's just like, Oh, it's, it's here first. And I feel like there's this, this, what you're saying is so what you're saying is so profound and i think that it sheds a lot of light on the prophetic word of elders as we we're talking about saint paisios and being and 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 walking in the spirit is that of of course they're going to see the judgment before others would see the judgment because it's actually they're actually experiencing the judgment because they've they're actually taking more onto themselves, but they're turning it. But they're turning inward on it. It's a very interesting. Well, well the other thing is, I just I don't want to go too long because I have 
I'm like dominating too much the conversation, but the other thing that I think is important to understand, and this is this is tough, but it's one of the things that you know the saints and priests and just people who are like are trying to always communicate that God loves us and that God isn't absent. Because remember the whole God absent thing, that's the that's one step towards you know, agnosticism and deism and ultimately atheism. And that's not what we hold. Even when we talk about God being absent, even when we talk about God withdrawing his grace, um, even like Sophroni talks about the God forsakenness, that isn't that isn't that. You know, you know what I'm saying? That isn't that because with God forsakenness, the profound hellish absence of God is almost the kind of inverted proof of his existence. Yeah. Because, because when he pulls away and you're in that hell of like, why have you pulled grace from me? Little side, you know, hack for everybody. If you experience that and a lot of people, you know, it's anyways. I haven't, but <laughs> yeah. Cause I was just about to say, this is part of the problem is a lot of people haven't, haven't experienced that. And I'm just saying that's part of the problem. Without because, a doubt. Because that that withdrawal of grace is a blessing, actually. Because when you have that withdrawal of grace, you come out of it so much stronger. That's the mystery. When you hear people like Father Rula Braga, even, you know, St. Nikolai, you know, I would give anything to have two more minutes in Dachau. Like, the reason w- what they're talking about is that profound, what is perceived as an absence of grace is the thing that reveals to them god yeah is that is it rock bottom is that true rock bottom i mean is that a way is. a way of understanding there's it? no there's no there's 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 no bottom deeper under or rock bottom bottomless it's like a falling into yeah. a void an yeah. endless void for again here's the difference this is what makes this all hopefully somewhat coherent for the child of god I'm not talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, and, and and this is where we get it back to the thing I was trying to say earlier. From speaking from experience, this is another reason why we can't just be like, yeah, like Team Jesus. It doesn't really work. It's because there's lots of overlap, but the reality of it is, is not only is this not talked about outside, well, I'm not going to speak for the, for the Latins, but I know for the Protestants, it isn't, uh, this, they don't have this concept. They don't, they don't have this experience. Even when we start talking about the dark night of the soul, the dark night of the soul is a good approximation for people coming out of the kind of Latin, the, the Western like tradition, but it's not the exact same thing. And so that, that God forsakenness is so profound. It's, it's, it is more profound than whatever ecstatic experience of grace that you think you've had. Oh, tears and all that stuff. No, 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 no. God forsakenness will, it'll, God forsakenness will put you in that place where it's like, I don't believe in God. I know God exists. Because that absence of that grace, once you've tasted it, it's almost like an apophatic thing. It's like only by losing it do you really know the truth of what it was. Well, and I've been forced recently due to a couple of conversations I've had with people to define, like, I think, what as a layman, what I observe as spiritual health. If a person is spiritually healthy, something that I can kind of trust um, is their ability to take correction. And I think that that's like, that's a big thing is because, um, what is it? Is it is someone, I forget, someone is describing demons, boorish and, and rude. Is arrogant one of the arrogant, boorish and rude? Is that, is boorish that, banal. Was, yeah, boorish but, and banal. Okay. So probably under that umbrella term, you could probably fit arrogant in there in some manner because that is what I've noticed that makes in the non outside of the house of god that makes a person find recovery or not their ability to take correction their ability to say like i truly and that's a 
Sibrin, that's the rock bottom is it's like, I have nothing. I have tried this. Please, I'm at a place and please let me, you know, the AA calls it the willingness to be willing. Just give me the willingness to even just try and be willing a little bit to just have someone tell me what to do because I, I can't do anything. Now, inside the house of God, I think what the side that is more prone to probably fall into the trap that Father's been laying out for a little while now um, to not join Paul Trades. Um, jihad is the ability to be corrected and say no what you ha how you are viewing this is wrong and it's western and you also it's like it doesn't have that uh phronema there's no mindset there of the saints because you're one looking for the winning team you're looking for the one that's going to end up dominating and if you can't like really pull them out of that place if like i'm sure father can speak to this a lot more than i can but if you can't pull them from that place then like then this spiritual illness is so great i as a human being can do nothing with it there's nothing i can do like at this point i just kind of like well you're sitting in the poop i'm just gonna mm -hmm. look at, like mm -hmm. let you keep sitting there either you're gonna realize it's poop or you're gonna like mm -hmm. or you're just gonna keep sitting in it either way like i can't keep hanging out in the manure pen because i'm just a human like I'm, I'm going to jet, mm -hmm. but I, I think that at the end of the day, if I'm talking to someone who's willing to at least hear what I'm willing to talk about and at least be able to take away a nugget of information because I'm not changing lives here, but I, I can instill one more little piece in a person. And if they're not willing to hear it, there's nothing I can do with them. If, if I keep putting up options and they keep putting up barriers why that thing that I just offer them is not going to work. Well, you could try this place. Well, that's really loud. I don't really want to be there. You know, it's really loud. You know, like you want to go to this recovery place? No, it's too loud there. There's nothing I can do with that. Like, oh, well, like that's that's the principle. That's the principle, Andrew, where it's like that. And it was, it was funny, Father, because there, that was the, fr the phrase that was going through my head was like, it's when you encounter somebody and then if somebody comes and they ask you for whatever, and then you give them the answer, and then they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, but, 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 what if, but, but, what if uh, instead yeah. I did?" And it's just like, "Yo, but, wait a minute, what do you mean instead? <laughs> did you come? Go away? I can't even imagine. And so, like, did you come? Actually, did you come to me to ask me a question, or what are you? So, what, what, what's mean, going on? <laughs> this gets back to like my whole thing. It's like that's that's like my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah." You know what I mean? I'm sure. That's, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like that's literally like my life, you know. Father, and, sorry. I'll fin I, in one minute, I have something to say, but please finish. Well, I just, you know, again, besides just like cranky old man turbo episode, like that's like my life. But like the thing is, is so for me, what that looks like is I can't give up. I can't because to me, to give up is to become indifferent, and it's like. This is, and, and so this is the thing, right? Um, let me just kind of walk it out for everybody. Like, never mind me, whatever, but let's say you're a priest, right? Or your own dad or your own godfather, whatever. You don't want them to give up on you, right? You want them to be merciful, to love you, to be patient, to be understanding. Everybody, everybody wants that, right? Everybody wants God to, to just forgive them and to keep going right just please give me another chance god please help me to change god everybody wants that right i'm assuming yeah again yeah. i'm assuming right okay. yes well here, here's the problem think about this right so real talk jimmy's hearing this and jimmy's like look it's all good it's kind of fun talking but like things are getting kind of real out here and I, i'm kind of sick of hearing because every time I feel like you guys are talking about stuff, it just, it just, it feels like I don't understand what you're saying. How does that really play out for me? So I got a family and I got this and I got that. And it's just like, okay, I'm just playing that devil's advocate, right? But I'm like, okay, check it out, Jimmy. I totally get what you're saying. And real talk on, on the real basic level, yeah, if someone comes and tries to like, you know, defile your wife or your daughter or even your neighbors, whatever, you, you stop them because that's you laying down your life for them, right? 
Okay, great. You good, Jimmy? Okay, great. That's why I said I'm not pacifist, right? Moving on. But what you don't understand on the other end is if you get to this place where you start kind of be like, man, just nuke those ragheads. Man, just, you know, take care of, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. If you start going there on X, I'm just this real talk. You start going there on X all the time. You start going there on whatever Discord all the time. You start being like, hey, you know what? That Austrian painter, he's got some great points. You know what I'm saying? That Austrian painter, right? If you, you start just kind of like flirting with that stuff, what you don't realize is you're, it's like the ship, that little turn of that rudder, down the line... Yeah, you're in a land that you don't recognize, and so this is a slippery slope, man. This is, you know, if if we were writing a story, I'd have to start changing names at this point because I can give you real names of people. Yeah, right. So you multiply that by like however many. Like, do you want your priest to help you make sure that you get your chicken and your picket fence and like you know your grass fed beef? Or do you want your priest to help you get this place where it's like you ha- you have a chance at the judgment? Which which one? Yeah. 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 And that sounds like whatever, but that's that's the kind of that's that's where it's at for me. You know, it's like people like, hey, this isn't blessed, you know? And well, maybe da 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 it's like, okay, look. What do you want from me? What do you want from anyone? Do you just want them to be like, yeah, yeah, cool, whatever? Because at that point, that's not love. And if that's if that's where you allow a culture of a family, a culture of a community to go, not only is that not love, not only is that not healthy, right? Because that's that's ultimately a more square gap version of wokeism, anyways. Because wokeism yeah. is just you know, do whatever you want, give people what they want, whatever. But that's not Christ. And that's my big point is that's not Christ. And Christ isn't some nebulous, vacuous philosophy that we can kind of project whatever on. I mean, people do it all the time. But this is getting back down to discernment. Well, how do you discern? Like, there's lots of people who are like, yeah, down for Christ, the king of stuff. And like, at best, they're on their journey because we all know that we were at some point in time and we're all trying to get better, right? But at the same time, right, there's some hard truths that you got to really hold on to. For instance, here's a trap for a lot of people. Yeah, I know the truth. Let's say orthodoxy, the exclusive claims of the church, all that stuff. I know the truth, but God has me in this place where, you know, I'm really trying to be all things to all men or, you know, like fill in the blank of where you are this specific chosen one that's trying to unite and make some, you're trying to build the bridge. The the chosen one. Yeah. It's always the chosen one. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. (laughs) Yeah. Nine times out of 10, that's not going to be you, man, because the people that we are seeing do that on the public, on the public, in the public square, they're not doing a great job. No. And, and the ones who like are doing, are trying to do a better job at it in their better moments, they're even frustrated themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like they're even frustrated themselves. They're, they're, if you, if you captured people, you can see like, yeah, you know, they're, they're struggling and they're kind of caught up themselves because what happens is you jump in a certain, you know, I love those things. It's like, Hey, don't jump in the river. Person jumps in the river. It's like that scene, you know, it's like they're in the hospital. 400 yards later. It's like, help me. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, once you jump in that river, you think, you think, mm-hmm. nah, this is, you're standing at the sideline. You got your, you know, Coors Light or whatever. And you're cozy. And you're thinking, I can navigate that, no problem. Right. <laughs> that scene, 400 yards down the line, and it's just like, ah, like, 
<laughs> yeah, help me. You know what I mean? So my big thing is, let me give you another example. What are you talking about? How about this? Why are you even hanging out by the tree? Like, well, a tree, you know, tree life. Like, hey. Why are you even there? Why are you, why are you even, even in the but... general area? Why, why are you, you close enough to grab it? Man. Why are you even there? Hey, Man. Lot, Lot, why are you even hanging? Why are you even like going towards Sodom? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why are yeah. we even yeah, like yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, inch yeah, our yeah, way yeah. there? So, yeah. Father, may I ask, is there a specific example of something you're talking about? Because I think this is one of the parts we could be accused of. Oh, being there, oh, many. there are. Of course, but I, I for one, think I know what you're talking about, but I'm not entirely sure that. Is there someone specific that you're referencing? I mean, let's not let's not do names. Let's not do. Yeah, names. No, no, no. no, let's take names out. But is there something a movement? Yeah, yeah. Something that you're talking about? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. You're talking about ecumenism, or like the American. Okay, look, look, of look I'll, I'll throw something at you. I'll throw something at you, right? And like, it's all good, right? And it's all just you. It's YouTube stuff, whatever. It's all good. But like, there's this guy. What's his name? Um, Ruskin. Uh, Ruskin. Ruslin. This guy. His name's Ruslin, right? Ruslin. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. And there's these people. Like, I don't even know who they. You know, they just the algorithm throws people up, and it's like it's just kind of weird. Whatever. You know, it's kind of like like Lex Friedman, right? I is that guy a plant? Like, I don't know. Like. Yo, it's like I've never heard of the guy, and then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, okay, you know, like yeah. lots of people, right? So it's the same thing with this wrestling guy. And there's these like weird, like YouTube pastor guys, right? And they're like, okay, you know, you, know, you got a 25 million followers. It's like I don't even know where you came from, but like for instance, this wrestling guy, you know, he had he had he had Jonathan on Pajot, right? And he did this whole thing. And I guess this guy's deal is he was like Armenian, but now he's like, I don't know what he is, reformed, whatever. And so this whole thing, you know, but like, okay, it's all good, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I just saw a recent thing for him. And now take in mind, someone would be like, yeah, but that's just YouTube, who cares? But like, I just want to remind people, you know, you're talking about 300, 400, 500,000 views of something. That's thank, father. Thank you. I was just having this discussion the other day. Like, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. And like, people don't understand numbers, right? Like, I don't understand numbers. And I understand numbers better than, you know, people who are thinking this way. So anyways, like as a, in the, the sociology brain. So anyways, so this guy, just to give you trajectory, it's like this guy, he had like Pajot on and there's like, well, Orthodox, and like I'm reformed and like he's crisis, you know, Christ King camp or just like Wait, you is, know, he, is he is he orthodox is he no orthodox? he's not no he's our, he's he was armenian he was he's oriental he's, he was armenian orthodox yeah. whatever because they're, they're not orthodox okay orthodox. but like he's armenian orthodox quote unquote and like the same story as everyone else like it was just religion and then i really found jesus my evangelical church blah 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 oh okay but like you know he's trying to get that route of like i'm intellectual and i can appreciate certain things about orthodoxy and blah 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 right but see here's here's the problem man here's the problem so like i saw this thing i'm trying to remember what it um oh you know what it was yeah 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 yeah. and, and see all this matters right because this is like the public square this is the public square we're talking about there's that cowboy guy who has like I don't know. He has like some revelation song, whatever. I don't know. There's, there's, there's some country singer who has some top hit. The video is just cheesy as get out. It's really bad, but he's got some uh, revelation song and it's like made the rounds. Oh, is that the guy that, that's not the guy that Jordan Peterson. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What is is this guy? What do you call him? Where this Ruslan guy is? I don't know. But this Ruslan guy, right? So this Ruslan guy, but who am I? Who's this guy Turbo? Like, whatever, you know? So, so this Ruslan guy, he has, he, so he has, like, the meta, right? He has the clip. He's commenting on the clip of Jordan Peterson and Black Jack, whatever the cowboy singer country guy's name, right? And so the country guy, you know, I'm like, hey, 
I like his little spiel on it because he used my favorite word, right? He's like, hey, are you on Team Jesus? He's talking to Jordan because he's like, hey, you know, when you see him, will you give your, you know, will you trust him? Because if not, terror forever, eternal terror. I'm like, I love eternal terror. That's awesome, right? So he's like, yeah, eternal terror. And then, you know, Jordan Pearson's like, I, I was, I made that decision a long time ago. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. So why am I bringing up the story? Well, so Rusin's like, yeah, you know, and he's like, I told you guys, um, I told you he was on Team Jesus a long time ago. The Orthodox want him to wear a jersey. You know, they want him to like wear a jersey, an Orthodox jersey, whatever. And I'm like, okay. And so what's funny is, here's, here's the thing that's funny, right? So what's funny is, on the one hand, yeah, 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 I see what he's saying. And I'll, okay, yeah, you know, I see what he's saying. People are like, yeah, repping the club. Because the people who, like want to rep the club, again, they're the people that I'm trying to like, you know, kind of like agitate, make them upset with me because I'm hoping it wakes them up. Because those people who do want Jordan Peterson to just kind of put the jersey on, you're the problem. You're, you're the problem, right? Yeah, like, no, nah, forget, forget, the, point, forget right? the jersey. You're the problem. But forget the getting, jersey. getting back to, you know, Ruskin, like, hey, there's this portion where he then, you know, he has this thing and Black Jack, he, I love it because it's great. Black Jack's talking about holy terror, eternal terror, which is awesome, right? And then, like, he has this shot and it's a candle. See, you got to pay attention to this stuff. It's a candle and it's like an icon of Christ. So you can see Christ, the halo on and everything. But Christ's face is blocked out with the candle flame, right? So what's interesting is he wants to take iconography he wants to take like the trappings of orthodoxy ruskin does ruskin and like ruskin liked having pajo on and you know like trying to like see i can keep up with you pajo and he had his people like oh you go ruskin whatever ruslan you know i just want to call him ruskin because whatever so it's like <laughs> so anyways but my point is is like okay so these people and in, in Ruskin's mind, he's like, hey, it's just, it's all about Jesus, Team Jesus. As long as we all got Jesus, we're good. Okay. No problem. And there's a place where I, I can meet you on that level. Okay. No problem. Right. Because I know God's working with everybody. God's working with Ryland, Rygar. You know, God's working with um, Shreky girl. Anton, you know, LeVay, Shreky, whatever. God's trying to get everybody going, right? But, like, there's this place where, okay, one of us is wrong. See, the thing is, when you're trying to build the bridge, when, like, when you're trying to build the bridge, if you're building a bridge just to have a bridge, you don't build a bridge just to have a bridge. You, have, you build a bridge to get somewhere. So when people are like, I just want to build the bridge, whatever. For what? Like, what they really mean is, I just want everyone to kind of, I just want to connect and like, get, and that's the problem with the ecumenism thing. We just want to connect just to connect and like, for what? To me, that's just casual sex. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, they, they want to, like, Father, they want to build the bridge to hang out at the bridge. Like they want to build a bridge and then they just want to like hang out on the bridge every day. Like they want to go to the bridge and like eat lunch on the bridge I and mean, like do all these things. <laughs> that's one of the great scenes from Lost Boys for sure. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But mm -hmm. even that, you know, I'm bringing out that reference for a reason. Because if you remember in yep, Lost yep, Boys, yep. right? And they're just hanging out on the bridge and like the bridge was an actual real interesting narrative mm -hmm. piece in there because it transitions mm -hmm. michael right when he's on the bridge or they're hanging out and the train comes ooh, and like the yep. bridge is always this place they're going but that's the place where michael finally begins to transition into like the full delusion you understand what i'm yes. saying yes we didn't plan hanging that. out at the bridge hanging out at the hanging bridge, out at the bridge. and yeah. you know who else hangs out under bridges trolls that's right that's right mm -hmm. and bridges are very interesting bridges are are one of the thin places in the world they're liminal for sure they're liminal spaces mm -hmm. bridges cliffs right the edges of rivers mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. liminal spaces mm -hmm. right 
And, and the whole thing of that liminal space is keeping someone in that transitional liminal space, that's part yeah. of the trap. Yeah. See, Christ doesn't want to keep you in that liminal space. He's trying to get you moving. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, if a storm comes, the bridge is probably one of the last places you want to be, or a cliff, you know? Oh, definitely. Uh, I'm going to say this. When I was a drinker, I drank under a lot of bridges, and I think I just realized oh. why. On bri- on bri- bridges are a classic place to to do narcotic substances. Yeah, well, on them, under them, under them. It's the place yeah. to also like have the talk. You know, like the mm-hmm. like things haven't been right since the war or whatever. So we got to mm-hmm. talk with veteran Jimmy out somewhere. So the his mm-hmm. buddy's going to take him. Truman Show. When Truman starts going insane, the very first thing, or he's not going insane. Turns out he's going sane. And he's realizing mm-hmm. what's going on. He sits at the bridge. He sits at the bridge, leading out of town. Under the under the bridge, the uh, Chili Pepper song. It's where I drew oh. some blood. Yeah. Under the bridge downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, this this is the thing because there's these movements that just. Uh, I feel like we we're talking about this not too long ago, but it's not about being. It's just not about. It's it's about the real thing. What what who is who is the real Christ? What is real love? Mm-hmm. What is real wisdom? Mm-hmm. What is real strength? Like it, it's getting down to what are these things that are real? And and this is why I'm saying like these movements to try like build bridges and do this and that. It's like I we can all appreciate it. We, look, we talked about okay, that's great. The you know Peterson Pajo Dyer pipeline. That's awesome. It's I'm 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 glad I want more people. I'm not trying to. Although, necessarily... although Father, I must say I don't think that there is any longer a Peterson Pajot Dyer pipeline. I think the, I think Peterson and the people around him have have redirected that pipeline because, like, when I see their new, have you seen their their? So they did a reality show now, Foundations of the it. West. I don't. It's not worth watching. It's a terrible reality show. But anyway, it's the it's the Beatles. So they have the Beatles like the last episode. They've got this Beatles photo. And it's like so the Beatles is the 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 cast of the reality show is Peterson, Pajot, um, What is he? Bishop Bishop Barron or whatever. Oh, the Baird, Catholic guy. Yeah. And um, Ben Shapiro, who's the Jew. And then I think they might have like a. I don't know who the other guy is, some sort of like historian type or something like that. But I think everything's Peterson's whole because it's like his it's something like Foundations of the West. Okay. I was like, wait, Foundations of the West. And then they go to they go to uh Jerusalem. Yeah. And there's an Orthodox guy. And yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Foundations of the West? What? Yeah. No, 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 no. This is the foundation yeah. of the East. Sucker. Like, what are you talking about? That's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't, I don't care. You know, old grumpy curmudgeon guy. But, <laughs> um, you know, next year coming up, the, that those announcements were made. They seem to not be false about the joint celebration. Yeah, um, with the EP and with with Rome, you know, it's like that number just kept coming up. It was twenty twenty five. It was just yeah. like, and we can't, we shouldn't ignore. Yeah, what was happening which, a thousand years ago? Which let's just dive in this real quick too. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, because I don't know. I'm I'm just saying, like, there's this whole thing. Um, we kind of got in some trouble for it before, but I should think it's interesting to talk about. It's like, <laughs> it just seems like there's this, <clears throat> there's, there's something in the air trying to push and to give, you know, pieces, pieces of glass to make the mosaic for this bridge. Like, yeah. Um, the whole trying to, so like the Western right thing, right? Mm-hmm. There was this whole video that went started circulating, whatever, um, and it caught a lot of thing. You know, there was, there was a Western right priest on there, and I, I want to be very careful because I want to be charitable, but I just want to kind of address something because there's there's some things that I think are really kind of problematic 
that we have to really be kind of looking at, right? So for on the one end, it's like people have a wrong and a very um, immature understanding of orthodoxy. And people will fall into that trap of just like making, we've talked about this before, like some of the polemical of East West is just not legit. You know, it's better to say, old, you know, old versus new world. That That's the better thing, old right? New, old world versus uh, new yeah, world. Yeah, I'm really a big fan of this. Yeah. That being said, that given being said, it's on roots of orthodoxy if, you want, if you're looking for it. But that being said, there's some real, like, to act like there aren't real problems, in particular in the Western church, to act like there aren't real problems that we have to really kind of, you know, just kind of own up to as Western converts coming out of Catholicism, coming out of Protestantism, it's, it's getting back to what you're saying. It's like, have you for like, you know how we're saying people have forgotten what happened in 20, right? So these people, cause here's, here's one of my problems. These people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like get us back to the Western roots of the church. But it's like, Okay, just so we're clear, the hypothetical thing, that's the devil's game, first and foremost. Yeah. Hypothetically speaking, that's the devil's game. But past that, let's just be clear about something. You know, it's kind of like you got to take it for what it is. And, you know, the West fell from orthodoxy, you know, for a reason. And we all know that. All of us who converted know that. Does that mean we have to, you know, all of a sudden try to be Russians and try to be whatever? No. But again, if you've been in Orthodox long enough, you know that, like, it is, there is truth to saying the, the Orthodox mindset, Fronima, whatever, is an Eastern mindset and what that means. Right? And if you don't know what that means, well, you know, go ahead and hang out with some Serbians or some Russians or some Arabs, and you'll kind of get the idea, right? So that being said, I just want to say, like, some of this is important because the trap to be like, hey, we want our own thing. We want our own thing. It's like you wanting your own thing is part of the problem. What are you talking about? Wait, who, are we talk who are we talking about? Yeah. I'm about to show about? you. Wants their own. Okay, okay. No matter who it is, we're Americans. We want our own American orthodoxy. Okay. We're Westerners. We want to get back to like, hey, this is our Western heritage, right? Okay. 17-year-old kid. Hey, I just want my own... I want my own concubine. <laughs> okay, 17-year-old kid. You want your own concubine. You know what I mean? Hey, uh, you know, 12-year-old kid, I want my own, you know, opportunity. To, I want my own kind of fake gun. Because I get like, okay... 12 year old kid, you can't even clean your room on time, but you want a fake gun for like, you, know, you, you see what I'm saying? This movement no. of. I have no idea. Okay. It scales up and it scales down. And in, the, in a proper Christian mindset, whether you're talking big scale, I want an American patriarchate, or small scale, I want my own concubine at, you know, 17 years old. Um. You wanting your own thing and not respecting the authority, not respecting like the reality of like, I want my own thing, but I shouldn't. That's part of the problem. This is the whole thread of this conversation tonight, yeah. which is yeah. everything we're talking about is about what a, what a proper Orthodox culture looks like. And that's the only thing that's going to be able, if there's, if something needs to survive, what's going to survive? Do we want something that's just the externals to survive? No, because Getting back to everything, guys, God's judgment is to make sure that stuff gets baked out. See, that's what... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're, you're kind of saying, Father, unless you're, unless you're getting ready to spin into something else. Like, I don't want to interrupt I'm just, you. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that all the points... Like, I did, a, I did a talk, whatever, and I said the thing, which everyone, whatever, is like, you know, wanting an Orthodox America isn't the same thing as, like, you know being like wanting a, a new Byzantium, whatever. Like, okay, yeah, I get that, right? And 
I want an Orthodox America more than you do. Like, what are you doing about it? You know what I mean? Right. Right. <laughs> but the thing is, is what you think is an Orthodox America is just like gilded cupolas and yeah. guys with beards running around it's, and like it's whatever. It's the form. Like it's the form. And it's just it's yeah. purely form. They just want the externals. And then if you if you think, no, it's not, I don't want to want the externals. I want, you know, a trad wife and blah blah blah. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Father Sarah from Rose, what did he say? He said, people who are enamored with vestments and glittering censors are gonna be the first ones yeah. to fall for the Antichrist. Sure. And people yep. don't understand what he's saying. People will quote it, people will do whatever, but I'm telling you, it's true. It's true. Because when people talk about Orthodox yeah. America, this is this is what they have in mind. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? It's one thing to talk about Athenite elders. It's another thing to practice quote unquote Athenite spirituality. They're just, they're, it's not the same. Yep. It's so, not. Right. So, Father, if I can, just real quick, I just want to understand for us on the lower end of the intelligent scale of the people oh, yeah. who listen, I, I'm sp- speaking for you guys. You're saying, that and if that there's a strong yammering for there to be a Western Orthodox Church of America, but by the process, there that is not okay. Let me back it up just a second. You said a long time ago in a father, uh, in a homily, father, that as Orthodox in America, we have to recognize that we are guests in the house, we are guests mm-hmm. in the Orthodox Church. Like, this is not ours, we can't claim this. This is something that. Mm-hmm. We have to look continually to the East. Well, what are they doing? The old world. Look mm-hmm. to the old world and mm-hmm. say, well, what are they doing? That's what we need to be doing to it with discernment, with mm-hmm. discernment. Mm-hmm. So with the people that are clamoring for a Orthodox Church of America to have our own thing. Well, Andrew, just... it's not an Orthodox Church in America. It's an Orthodox America. I think there's a different con- that's it's a different okay. concept. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the Orthodox America, us Americans are not capable of taking that on because we would find a way to corrupt it, probably because of the various like things that the Western church has done. We can't, I mean, I've, I've struggled on the micro scale with so many things about the church, about this is just not. But that's the point. Yes. Like the, the, the people who want an Orthodox America, do they even have an Orthodox home? Well, and like how how are you talking about you're going to make an Orthodox America and you can't even ex- make your own bedroom ex- Orthodox? That is that yeah. is that is literally the emoji bullseye emoji. That's literally what I'm talking about. People don't even have an Orthodox home. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 and look, right, fa- and Father, do they forgive me? Do they even do, are, do those people even recognize that an orthodox home is a thing? No. Like it's it's I know that that's something that that both you and Nicholas impressed upon me when I first became that it's like the home is the little church. Like yeah. here's the books on it, here's the teachings yeah. on it. Like it's yeah. the it's start there. Like this yeah. is it. But but watch this right. And again, whatever. Maybe it is all ramble soup. Maybe it is all incoherent. I don't know. But this is what I was saying earlier about. This is getting back to the thing about the dad and getting back to mm. the sobriety and the cross and like actually the difficulty of working these things out. That's why that's why these this is why this is important, because having the home isn't again, it isn't just about. You know, you got your icon corner set up, although that's just, that's very important. That's very important. But if you have your icon corner set up and you're never in it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's real, right? If you have your icon corner set up and you're never in it, if, if, if your extent of orthodoxy between you and your wife and your children is just kind of like yelling at them to get ready to go to church so you can show up on time. That's not gonna cut it. Yeah. That's just that's just not that's just not gonna cut it. Because here's here's the thing: the reason why cradles can be so cradleish, you know what I mean, and just be like, "Are you guys even Christian?" is because it is kind of baked into their culture. There are certain things that reflect a Christian culture, yeah. hospitality, 
right? Okay. Like the reverence for holiness, hierarchy. There's just certain things like you don't know this until you know it. And that's okay. But all I'm saying is you just need to be in that place like, yeah, like I don't know it and I'm going to slow the roll so that I can learn it. Uh, Richard Rowland and um, uh, Jonathan Pajot did an uh, interview like, I don't know, two years ago about this kind of. And, and Richard Rowland had the great insight, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's, that's exactly it. It's like, you know. And I'm just, I'm just gonna. I got a shout out to him because I like Richard, whatever. I, I like Jonathan too. I love Jonathan. Uh, but he's like, look, you know, he brought up two things. He said, you know, having, you know, a, an official icon of the mother of God, you know, that's kind of like one of the hallmarks. You know, you start seeing where a place is kind of like having it soak in, right? I'm, I'm all for that. But the other thing too, it was just like, you know, just. You got to slow down and just realize that you need to do actually your part so that, you know, what did he say? He said, so like 50 years from now, you know, instead of hummus, it's like guacamole in Texas. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just, it's not something that's going to be contrived. It's just something that over time happens. And that in itself is orthodox. See, this is not to get all like weird and meta, but that in itself is what needs to happen. People mm -hmm. clamoring to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, let's, let's contrive something, right? Which is, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, I, shout out, respect to Western right brothers and sisters. I'm being like totally serious. God bless you. But that is one of the critiques about it is like, it's kind of contrived a little bit because it was, it's resuscitated for a purpose. You know what I'm saying? It's not coming out of like a living tradition. It's resuscitated for a purpose. And, and that is one of the things where it's like some of the polemical arguments about like Byzantine right versus Western right and all those things. It's like one of the core things is that whether it's um, the Melkites, the Byzantine Catholics, or it's the Western right Orthodox is like there's the externals of it, but it, it's not it's coming. It is, there's a measure of being contrived and it becomes problematic. Because it just becomes about like, well, I'm just, my big thing is that I'm Western. I think the phrase we've used before is Western for Western sake. Yeah. You know, and it's like, everyone goes through that with everything. I'm, I'm just like, I'm not immune to that. No one else is immune to it, but I'm just saying, but we, I just, it is, it is important to bring this up though, because in my mind, it's like, if the Western right and anything like that is going to be legit, then you have to be honest about these things that we're talking about so that you can face them. Yeah. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So that you can recognize, okay, like, yeah, there's these things that we need to really try to be more prayerful about. And what does that mean? Be more prayerful. It means being more patient, being more honest about where we're coming from on things. And and I'm just using that as an example to help people not feel like this is completely nebulous and abstract. Because in my mind, this plays out with like everything. Because the Orthodox cat, the general Orthodox cat, he's just thinking like, yeah, how do I get out of Orthodox America? And like, and this and this and that. And it's like, you're thinking about the church in the context of your society and your culture and your family the wrong way. Yeah. Because... You're putting the cart before the horse. You yeah. don't even know, like you don't even know how to, you don't even know how to engage Christ in prayer yet. Just like just real talk, just just yeah. real talk, because being Orthodox isn't about having a bunch of right moralities and and having like cool aesthetics. Even though our aesthetics are the best, that's another thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the point being is, it, it's about these things of like. It's the things that facilitate not just like salvation in the sense of like forgiveness and not going and not going to hell, quote unquote, but transformation, transformation, becoming more Christ-like. And so the thing is, is that there are aspects of our culture as converts, as Westerners, that we just have to be honest and just kind of like not embrace those things if we want the main goal to be the main goal. And then 
the main goal of what being Christ. And then he who seeks to find his life must lose it. Yeah. But if he loses his life for my sake, he'll find it. So if you want to find your roots, if you want to get back down to your roots, then you got to lose your roots. You got to be willing to sacrifice them for the sake of Christ. And then guess what? Then you'll truly be the Western guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, then you get your true roots. You get your yeah. true roots. The dude who's trying to yeah. be St. Patrick, you're the last guy who's going to be St. Patrick. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> I'm going to be St. Patrick before you will. You know what I mean? Um, that, but that's that, that was the one thing I wanted to add at the very end is I think that when my wife and I came into orthodoxy, we had a huge advantage in which I was done with Protestantism and she was done with mm-hmm. Catholicism. Anything that pretty much started to resemble that and in a way... Mm-hmm. I wanted to ditch pretty quickly. I was ready to throw a lot of that stuff out. And I'm not sure Christendom in the West is really ready to throw out their, what, like 150 years of theology or whatever. Their deep, meaningful, like 175 root year roots of theology, <laughs> like, you know, their C.S. Lewis's or their John Wesley's or whatever. They're just like, that's, that is not, you know, I'm not a priest, but when I'm talking to someone, and there's just like this certain like fervor by which someone will hold on to this Protestant teacher or Protestant writer or Catholic, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they just like are just really holding on to them. I'm not saying that that's the red flag, but for me on an interpersonal level, it's like noted, like noted. Like that is something that because there's something and it's tricky because I had this pointed out to me one time that C.S. Lewis wrote like it was because of the devil that creation fell and it was like well no it's because of man that creation fell right and that yeah. seems so yeah. small and culturally um, christendom is not ready to accept that those two things are they are so important it is so like imagine well, the, trying... it's, it's the orientation that father was talking about it's like it's the boat being if I this took, far off, and then a hundred years later, you're in a, another place completely. If I took like cool Christian Kyle, like <laughs> dreadlocks, like neat dreadlocks, smart looking glasses, like probably <laughs> like a sleeve tattoo of some like John three sixteen or something like that, and it's just really on fire for God, right? And I tried to explain him to him the problematic. Well, first I wouldn't try to explain it to him. But if I were to try and point out, like, look, you should look into why the filioque is problematic. Right. I'm not even sure that, like, that person would be like, well, why does this really matter? It's okay. three words. Isn't it really just about God? Isn't it really just about, like, experiencing the kingdom of God? And that, as a culture, I think is just something that you can There's no nuance there's no way because it's a going. because it's a plank in the bridge. I love the bridge analogy because it's like, yo, dude, yeah, it's you want to hang out on the bridge, but you realize like that's a plank that's been removed that like you walk out that far on the bridge and you fall through. You fall through now like it every single. So, oh, why does that even matter? It's like, dude, every single piece of this bridge is there. To get yeah. everybody ac- everybody across who's going to walk across this bridge, do you are you really if you need to be crossing this bridge, do you really want to tamper with you, the bridge that's got people across? Is that what you want missing? to do? Do you want a plank missing from the ark? Like, I mean, do you want like like yeah. do you want a hole left in the yeah. side of the ark? Like, that's yeah. not that's something Good that point. needs to be like. Good point. That's something that just hey needs to be hey. There's a there's a plank missing down here at the bottom. Yeah. Why does that you know, even matter? Why does that even? Why does it even matter? There's a giant hole in the bottom of the boat. You're all. Why does a hole in the bottom of the boat? Yeah. (laughs) But and again, I want to make it clear. (laughs) I've read my fair share of C.S. Lewis. I mean, at some point, I will be reading the Chronicles of Narnia with my children. Like, I'm not. I'm not bad. I'm not bashing. I'm not saying like. And there's neat things about the stuff. That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. This is another part of the problem. Is that we have to be like apologizing right. for, right? It's like well, I just I want to make sure. No, that- no, no, you're fine. I'm just saying, like I, I love Narnia too. Like, but see, the thing is, is like it, you know what? It kind of gets back down. Like, like for instance, like music, right? Let's like, well, you like your pop music, and this is like, let me give you a little secret about something. Everything that I'm just like, whatever we talk about things because 
it doesn't matter to me. That, right. see, that that's the thing is, it doesn't matter to me. I've yeah, left all right. those things behind at some point in time. I went through my hell's bells phase and like, oh, I got to get rid of all my records and I got to get rid of I've like right. been there, done that, which is I right. think a necessary stage. See, this is another thing I'm trying to say is I'm not like, hey, you need to get where I'm at. That's not what I'm saying at all. Mm -mm. I'm saying, hey, twelve year old kid. You want you want an airsoft gun, whatever, and like that's good. But like, we got you. We we got to get you to wait on something. A seventeen year old kid that you want your own harem, you want a concubine. Well, eh, there's problems with that. But like, you know, let's yeah. like, I get it. The problem is, is just when I tell you I get it. Please just understand. And this is getting back to like the culture thing. It's like the authority thing, and like, well, why? Well, you just understand, and like, yeah, the, is that part of it? Is that part of growing up where you just have to look at your your dad or your pastor, your priest, and be like, well, you still don't understand? Maybe. Yeah. To a degree. Probably to a degree. not to the degree that it is today, but to a, to a degree. And, 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 and so maybe this is me again. This is the old man show today. But like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm right there with you. Does it? Is Love it? Me too. I mean, is it really? Because before, I don't know if it's going to be, but like, Super and I were talking about this. It's like, hey, real talk though. I mean, I feared my dad and I respected my dad and I respected the old heads in the crews I ran with. Like that, you know what I mean? I just, those are the things that are kind of like being lost to us, which are some of those kind of connections that we might have to kind of like cross the bridge into like true orthodox faith and understanding and worldview, but they're quickly evaporating. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, like I'm all for let's find those things in our culture that can get us there. I'm all for that, but we have to know what's going to get us there. And we have to, it, because if you don't know what that is, a lot of times because people don't know what those things actually are. <clears throat> People are guarding the wrong things. Yeah. People, there you go. People don't know what they're looking for. And yeah. so they're, they're fighting over the wrong things. They're getting yeah. outraged over the wrong things. They're not, look, they don't know the things that they really need to fight for. Because there are things that you need to fight for. Mm -hmm. But the devil is all about like, hey, the devil wants you to get to fight for the wrong things. You know what I mean? It's not about just completely getting you in despair. He wants you to, to get all motivated, too. If he can get you spinning your wheels on the wrong thing, then that's that's just as good, right? I mean, well, Father, forgive me. I, Father, forgive me. I think this brings up I was wanting to say, like, it occurred to me in talking about this people who have a desire for an orthodox America, it's like there's something ironic about that because like going back to, I mean, all of the martyrs and confessors, but if we specifically want to go back to the Roma the Romanian saints who were in the prisons, like, are do you have a greater chance at being a saint in an Orthodox America or in a an America that is actively hostile to Orthodox? Babylon. Because you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Like, it seems like all the saints... Every day that I'm reading the life of the saints, it seems like the, every single one of them, the country they were in was against them. I just, Not for them. I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, that's, it, it's just, it's, it's madness. It's, it's, I will say this, Father, and I'm sorry, and I've only feel comfortable because yeah. I'm, I'm interrupting to say what a saint said. That's the only reason I'm like, I'm cool plowing through because I know you still have something to say, but it, I have seen, the quote attributed to St. Paisios where he says, mark my words, one day America will be holy. Mm -hmm. Like, so, I mean, there's... Yeah, I've heard that there. too. I've heard that too. I don't know for sure. I've heard that, I've heard that too. But I don't know if that's... Uh, it, that is actually... Let's just assume it is. Yeah. Let's just assume it is. Well, it's not going to be marshmallows and chocolates. Like yeah. St. Joseph the Hezekiah says, it's not going to be marshmallows and chocolates. But I think, I think what, I think what what how you interpret that 
is one of two ways. And I think there's a correct way. And one of them is what Cyprian's talking about is maybe the holiness will come from the oppression. The martyrs. Think, yes. The martyrs, the martyrs make Hold it on, holy. But uh, I think I think a person no. what's that, Father? No. No. It's not I think. There is no other way. That's well, the yeah. whole point. But like, the like, forgive me. Mind. I'm not trying to be like there the is, Western mind would see America as Neo Byzantium. There, there, there is no other way. Full stop. Period. Absolute statement. Absolute truth. There is no other way. And this, this is the thing: is there is no other way. You can't. You can't become holy any other way. I can prove it to you. What is the whole? Did what is the gospel that Christ rode in on a white horse with his blonde flowing hair, slaughtered all his enemies, enslaved them, and they built him a? Is that the gospel? No, obviously not. I don't know. I, we say obviously, but like, but that's that's the point. That's the point I was trying to make. No, no, hold on. I just want to stop right here because I already know what someone's going to say. You can't compare St. Alexander Nevsky, St. Demetrius. No, no. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they were defending the true thing. Mm -hmm. You had, like... Their world was against them. That's the thing. Everything was was coming in on top of them. And it was close by. It wasn't far away. It was on top of them. That's right. So defending again, it's just I hate I mean, I guess get it, whatever, but I don't know, man. It's just I know it's I know it's just so I know it's just like, well, what is it well, how does this really play out? Well, the way it plays out is all the stuff, right? We have to build. Why do we have to build? Yeah, we have to build schools, we have to build parishes, we have to build families, we have to build all those things because all those things manifest to us the life in Christ. Like, why do you want a school? Why do you want a parish? Why do you want icons? Why do you want iconostats? So that you can encounter God. So that you can, those all, all those things facilitate the, the sacramental and liturgical life. That's why. And you, and the sacramental liturgical life in this world is the means in which you encounter God. And in that encounter of God, you find life. But the the trick is, and this is part of the bargain, if you really are entering into that life, then the time will come when that will also be put down. You you have to face the cross somewhere, somehow. So you face it, you have a little mini cross every day, a little mini death every day, a little mini resurrection, and you die, you wake up, okay? But all these lead up to these, it's like birth pains. Your every day of your life of a cross and a struggle, it's a little uh, contraction. It's a little contraction. And then you have these large movements in your life. Um, man, did your wife get sick and die? Um, did your godfather leave the church? Um, did, your, did, your, did your confessor you know, hurt your feelings? You know, you know, these are real things for people, right? You have these huge movements, and they're like these really big contractions. And then as you go on in your life, you either learn to embrace those contractions because you know that they're birthing something, meaning you, or somewhere along the line, you have a big contraction, and you say, I'm not doing this. And And when you say, I'm not doing this, you can still be in the church. And this is, again, one of my points. You can still be in the church. You can still have icons. You can still tell people how moral you are. You can still vote for the right guy. But inwardly, you're turning away from God, and you're going and you're headed towards hell. Because the life of God, you're not wanting. Because there is no other way. You can't enter into that new life without that death. So... You have that real strong contraction. 
The strong contraction is an example, or it's the analogy here of a very difficult trial of your life. This is Peter. This is James, right? Trials have to come, talking about the scriptures, right? Trials have to come. The St. Joseph the Hesychast. Trials have to come for you, for your wife, for your kids, for your community, for this country, for this world. They have to come. And they are, they are all culminating, not in a bright, rosy future in this world. Quite the opposite. It's culminating into a death. And not only in that death, you have the ultimate resurrection. Because I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. To Amen. Come. To come. Amen. To come. You can, who do you want? You know, um, do you want, you know, Bob Marley? Or, you know, do you want, you know, Saint, you know, Saint Joseph? Like, who do you want? Because, yeah, pie in the sky. If you want to think this is pie in the sky, like you're fine. You're fine to do that. But what we have experienced, and that's part of what it means, is you don't you don't understand what the saints are talking about until you start tasting it yourself. And that's why you read the prologue. That's why you fast. That's what asceticism is there to do, to, to get you up to speed to where you can start tasting little bits of death. Because those yeah. little bits of death are those little actual inverted pieces of life. And the more that you're able to swallow that difficult pill, then one day it's like, boom. So when that final contraction comes, St. Irenaeus, he talked about people who would, you know, stillbirths. He talks about these stillbirths. What is a stillbirth? St. Irenaeus, he's saying stillbirths are these people who, you know, they denied Christ. Now he's talking about in the context of like, yeah, like maybe they denied Christ in the martyrdom, but you can apply that to people like I'm just saying. Somewhere along the line, they have that big contraction. They're like, no, nope, I'm not doing this. And people do it all the time. And so the thing is, is, do they end up in hell because God's like, you broke the rules and you didn't do this? No, no, no. They end up in hell because they already started turning away from him. They set out, they, they side with the devil. And they're like, your way is better. This way of the cross is bunk, man. I don't, this is, I don't want to do this. And, and, and that is like, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Scary do you thing. notice what they say to the master? They say, did we not work miracles in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? All that stuff. You notice none of them, none of the things that they give an example are, did we not bear the cross? Did we not lay our life down? Do we, you know what I mean? That's why he doesn't recognize them. Because he only recognizes those who are in fellowship with him. What does it mean to be in fellowship with Christ? Taking up the cross. How you how do you take up the cross on a larger scale unless you're taking up the cross on the smaller scale? See, I'm just saying the same thing over and over again, but in a million different ways because it's a giant diamond and there's a, a gajillion facets on that diamond. And the thing is, hopefully, if you start getting enough of the facets, if I'm trying to explain the same thing in enough ways, maybe you can get a, a kind of picture of this thing. But it's like, I, again, I'm realizing, oh, it's, it's not that easy because people don't, they don't want this. People, people don't want this, right? People want to be right. People want to be safe. People want to be comfortable. I, I totally get it. I'm a human being too. You know what I mean? That's not the cross, though. It's not the cross, though. It's not the cross. So, so then someone says to me, why are you always talking about this, blah, blah, blah? I'm always talking about it because I don't see it. I'm always yeah. talking about it because I know that it's a difficult life. But I also know it's blessed. And I also know that, like, listen, those of, well, I don't know, gosh, it doesn't matter. But but there also isn't another choice, Father. Well, there is. It's right. not well, like. It, there's a, yeah. I, I mean, there, there's I mean, a, there, I mean, there's there's a choice, but there's not another, like, good no, choice. Is basically I know. what I'm saying. Like, I was trying there's to, not another choice that gets you anywhere. Yeah. I, yeah. Because, like, I think we've talked about it before. I mean, it's just. Yeah, I mean, I 
that's an unfortunate it's a an apt but like you know i don't i don't know who our audience is all the time but yeah i mean what that's that silver thing i'm not trying to spread any bad emotions or anything like that as far as like if someone's personally experienced that that's awful that's not but it's it's really apt in the sense of like what do you call you know a baby coming out of the birth canal that stops you know like what do you call that and then like once it stops if it's not moving with the contractions anymore you know that's about as far as i'm willing to take that because i'm not trying to make anybody feel a certain type of way about that but that that whole motion that can that that pressure you know that's like saint paisios you know this is a saint paisios night but saint paisio said you know he's talking to some of the other monks and you have no idea the pressure i'm under at all times like you have no idea what i my life he's my life is not breezy you know and then I, on that orthodox wisdom i was listening to uh, a, a word by saint porphyrios and um i don't know if this is in wounded by love because full confession i've never read wounded by love cover to cover so i don't know if there's maybe a part in there i missed but they list all of saint porphyrios's illness a doctor who worked with saint porphyrios list his illnesses that dude was like blind he had like half his tongue didn't work like he said at one point it's gonna be harder for him to talk because he had like a tumor in his throat or something like that this is not an easy wow. grand life and when you look at him uh, with those with eyes to see you see a soldier of christ but from the world that is a frail old man that's a fr but this mm -hmm. is the pillar this is a pillar of a of the modern age is these frail little uh, elder ephraim of arizona saint ephraim of arizona same saint Pinesios, saint porphyrios yeah. Like the St. Gabriel, of, you mm -hmm. know, of Georgia, like these are St. Gabriel's a little bit more hardy, but these are like frail little old men outwardly, but like mm -hmm. they've done things that like no conqueror in the world has ever been able to do. They bore the cross. Right. <laughs> the hardest thing to do is to bear the, I mean... You know, this movement, this is, you know, this, this movement of people wanting to harm themselves, you know, um, suicide and stuff. It's like, it's the harder thing to do is like, okay, if you want this movement, then, then do it then. But do it in, in the real mm -hmm. way, because it's much more painful for you to, to, to humble yourself, to bear the cross, to like, you know what I mean? That's way more, that's yeah. way more difficult to do yeah. than, than to just kind of like end your life because you know you're unhappy and things aren't going your way it's it's mm -hmm. if you want to do violence to yourself then do violence real violence serve right. lay your life right. out die right. for virtue like that's the real pain if, if you yeah. really if you you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. that's that's the real thing and that's why you know suicide is such a pernicious thing and the demons mm -hmm. always push people to it yeah. Because not mm -hmm. only do they want to push people to suicide so that they can prematurely put themselves in the judgment of God and, and unfortunately, you know, fall short, fall yeah. short there. But also because it's a, it's blasphemy. It's a mockery of the cross. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a mockery of the cross. I had never so, thought about it that way, but it absolutely no, never is. It's a mockery mm. of the cross. It's blasphemy. So if if you really any if anyone has ever because in any time an Orthodox Christian is given that thought, it is unequivocally one hundred percent always from the devil. Yeah. A, a baptized, charismatic yeah. Orthodox Christian doesn't get those thoughts naturally, mm -hmm. right? They're they're log as me, and then they are if they're accepted and brought in, then they you know begin to think that they're your thoughts, but it's from the devil. And so the thing is, is when the devil comes and throws that at you, then be like, okay, bet. Where am I? Where am I coming up short with Christ? Where am I coming up short, not picking up the cross? Oh, you want you want to, you want me to do violence to myself? Bet, let's do it. And then you get after it, and you you look to those places where you wanted to argue with your priest, with your dad, with your husband, with your wife, or whatever, and then you humble yourself. Do it. Yeah. Mm. Do it. See what happens then. Mm. You want to do harm to yourself? Get a couple of small children, raise them. <laughs> so that's that's a lot of harm. That's a lot of oh harm. Oh boy! Amen. Yeah. The last twenty four hours of that has been that for me. <laughs>
I mean, I've last I remember... 24 years over here, homie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there was like Fair enough. one morning where it was not even five o'clock in the morning. I know because I was working my old job. <laughs> And my son walked up to me holding a can of what I want to say, a pumpkin pie mix and <laughs> punched me in the crotch and then dropped the can on my foot. And then I was oh. like, well, I have to go to work now because I was like on my way out the door and he just bought the bed <laughs> right there and then dropped the can on my foot. And I was just like, and I, you can't get mad at him because he's like a year and a half old. He has no idea what he did. I'm like, yeah. okay. And I'm limping out the door yeah. and like, I'm like, I have to go load a bunch of stuff now. Yeah, so, that's awesome. I think that's a good well, place to call it for yeah, less father. So. Is there a word you needed to finish? I don't know. I don't. I can't remember if I cut you off, but no. Nah. Okay. Hope everybody can oh. forgive me for being an old man. No, I mean, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, father, we just have to recognize maybe me a little less, but we are old men. It's okay. I am. It's not a bad. Yeah, for sure. I think. Yeah. I for one. <laughs> For love or money, would not go back to being young for a heartbeat. It was much too painful. I didn't know Christ then. You know, there was nothing. There was nothing for me there. It was only after I got yeah. Orthodox. And I mean, there is nothing like. I'll just say this. This is this will be my my unnecessary but final whatever. There is nothing like the feeling because it's it's not pride, but there's nothing like the feeling of just in some small way for once when you're bearing your cross just a little bit there's nothing like just like for once i'm doing one millionth of just something i'm supposed i know i'm supposed to be doing it's like that feeling you get when you're at church on sunday where it's like i know i'm supposed to be here like you i know, know this it's, is it's peace with so much I did, of peace. like i, I so, did have one more thing i wanted to say forgive me sure and it's kind of crazy, right? He really was with us tonight. I, it's wild. St. Paisios. It's just like it's... Yeah. yeah I don't know yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is. I'll go pray his canon. But like... You know what we need? We don't have an American word for it, you know? But I want to just throw this out there because I don't want... Here's an actionable item, right? Philotomo. Mm. Mm. Honor. Right? Strength. Right? Like, yeah. Like... That's that's what we need to cultivate in our homes. That's what we need to cultivate in our communities. What does that mean? We need Fulotomo in our homes, right? Men need to honor their wives. Wives definitely need mm -hmm. to honor their husbands. Kids need to honor their parents, right? Mm -hmm. Then households can have honor within the community, within the parish, right? Mm -hmm. Then the parish, right, moves past just kind of being sick all the time and then actually becomes a benefit to their neighborhood, to their city, whatever, like, like, that's what I'm trying to say at the end of the day. This is like... Scales up. It scales up. And, like, I believe in that, right? I, I believe in that. And I give my life for that. But mm -hmm. you, you have to kind of put things in right order first. So, we, okay. so that's the actionable item. We need Philotomo. You need, like, you need Philotomo before you get all that other jazz. Because whatever... The government, your government, whatever you want, and you know, slaying your enemies, whatever, that's not going to get you for tomorrow, right? It's not like it's something that if you don't start tonight before you go to bed, right? Here's for Um, forgive me, but you know, young man, young sir, young father, young husband. We're all humans. No problem. I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, under the bridge. But just real talk. Like, every time you give in to porn, that's not Philotomo. Yeah. I'm just, you know what I mean? That's just not Philotomo, mm -hmm. right? That no one's perfect. I get it. Keep fighting. Keep getting up, right? The devil wants you to fall into despair. But just understand that, right? It's like, that's not Philotomo. And we, and again, it's a little kind of weird. It's self abuse, right? It's this weird abusing yourself. Well, if you want to abuse yourself, you want to see whatever. It's just like, well, chase the cross then. Just the cross. then, I'll shut up. What would happen if you if you just didn't do it tonight? Like to me, again, I, why am I talking like this? Because whatever, I shouldn't. You know, this is my vainglory, obviously, because like critics, whatever. I, I mean, actually. 
you'd be surprised how much I don't care, but I obviously care some. But it's like this reality of just like, what are you talking about? But like, I'm talking about to be a service to people because it's it's really like I could have been doing something else. All of us could, right? But I'm hoping this will wake somebody up. I, I, we always hope to wake someone up. Starting there, because the reality is, is you're not going to die. If you don't self-abuse tonight, you know, or tomorrow, just starting there. Like, I'm trying to be real practical, right? Don't talk to me about AR-15s and, and whatever flags. Let's, let's, let's get you to not self-abuse for 30 days before you talk to me about whatever, right? Like, I think that would be a good filter for 99% of these characters. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Right? You're, you're not going, like, I, I, I guarantee you, I will, I will bet my left thumb, literally, you will then not. You can't be a priest anymore. You will not die. <laughs> you, you will not, like, oh, and, like, pop. You're not going to. Quite the contrary. Quite the contrary, actually. Yeah, you're you're yeah, not going to yeah. die. So, yeah. so this is one of those things where it's like, this is not, you know, someone turned off a long time ago. Maybe someone can like clip this and then send to that, to that, whatever. But it's like, this is all just abstract. And I don't understand what you're talking about. So we'll just get to the end where I'm saying, because that person <laughs> who's saying that's like, here's why it's not abstract. You stop doing that. And then from there you build. Mm-hmm. Perfect. See who you are at that point. Yeah, for real. Because there's, you know, mm-hmm. there's nothing like denying yourself one of your little comforts. You'll find out who you are pretty quickly, and it's usually not as pretty as we think we are. And the other thing is, when you if you do fall, then when someone calls you out on it, like Andrew was saying earlier, don't try to justify it. Don't try, well, no one's perfect, brother. What about you, brother? Just be like, yeah, bear the shame, dude. You know what I mean? Try that. See, either way, it's a win-win. Half a lotomo, yeah. right? If you fall and you get called out on it, then own it. Get yeah. into it. Mm-hmm. Well, gentlemen, I think that's, that's that one. Um, Very good. Yeah, so... Okay, so, Jack, you're great. You're doing fantastic with our thumbnails. I'm just going to say it every time. We love it. He's had a nice long break, though. So, <laughs> yeah, get back to work, though. Come on. <laughs> um, uh, we don't pay you to sit around. We, we don't even pay him at all. We don't pay you. Yeah. We don't pay you. We don't pay him. That's why it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, if uh, generally when we talk about music, we try and throw it on a playlist on Spotify and on Apple Music, Royal Path Podcast. And by playlist. the way, how about that Father Alexander? I don't know what you're talking about off the top of my head. Did you like it? What did you, wait, did you give it wait, to Valentina? Yes, 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 yes. Did yes. she like it? Was it too? Yes, yes, she did. Yes. She hasn't commented to be on it, though. Oh, man. This father Alexander, we're going to put him in the link. I can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is the best album. I'm going to oh. put it in. Oh, I'm okay. going to put it it's in. It's music. It's music. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. She's 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 been she's been jamming it, so I know she likes it. It's but... so. Oh, it's yeah. Let me make Man. a note to myself to put it in. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, um, check this album out. It's a perfect album. Oh, strong words. Ten out of ten from Father Turbo. A ten out of ten. <laughs> ten out of ten. It's a perfect album. Um, I have not heard it, so I'm. Going yeah, to... you have. I sent you some of it. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. Yes, that is incredible. I know it's exactly what you're. Album. Oh yeah, the real the sin. Yeah. Mm. It's a perfect album. Yes, it's very, very it's good. Perfect. It's very good. It, yeah. It. You know. Anyway, that's a conversation we'll have a different time. Um. So yes, please. That is very very good. It's very. Yeah. I anyway, I remember his last um, name right now. It's like Stradinitsko or something. Like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. But um so and then also if you I want to reach out Cyrillic, to us though. where put it in your Google you Translate. Can't, you can't put in your Google Translate. No. Okay, all right. Um uh, if you want to reach out to us, contact at royalpath.network. And then 
One thing I did want to say real quick before we go, and we're going to end on this because I don't remember the other stuff. Mount Tabor, please check out our, please check out um, our activity with Mount Tabor. It's a school involved in our parish. Uh, school of coffee. School of coffee. Fantastic. Um, wonderful coffee. It's all the talk. Staro Stenko. Staro Stenko. Yeah, Star Father Stanko. Alexander Staro Stenko. Yeah, yes. it's good. Um, I, I want to say something real quick. But I'm going back to what yeah. Father said something a while ago about he's talking about, oh, you guys, you know, you guys listen to pop music or whatever, you know, da, 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 da. A couple of weeks ago, because someone reached out and they brought up a good point. I want to, I meant to talk about it. Somebody mentioned that our love of Tropic Thunder and how that was like, that's a pretty blasphemous movie. And I don't, they didn't really know how we could really, I don't. So I've I just want to see it. I mean, I've never seen okay. it. You d- nobody needs to. It's it's <laughs> it's at the at the time it's it's groundbreaking now because it's Robert Downey Jr. absolutely doing outright blackface, and it's <laughs> and it is so funny. And the way that he does it, that's what I remember from that movie. That's what I remember. And, and, and Tom and Cruise is, dancing around. And so she specifically mentioned the amount of blasphemy that Tom Cruise uses. I believe is is what the email talked about. And how could we find that funny? And I agree. I think I hadn't thought about that in a long time. So for the people out there, remember, when we talk about stuff, I would say me personally, 90% of the movies I've talked about, I haven't seen post-2020. I haven't seen with my eyes since then. So there's stuff I'm going back and watching things. So supposedly as innocuous as like shows like Parks and Rec, which is advertised as like this really silly, kind of really innocent show. And I'm seeing stuff in it now. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is absolutely foul. Like there's like a lot of foul things. So I want to, we talk enough about culture. Yeah, nobody has to. I'm just pointing out examples. I've talked enough about culture and about things that I think some people might be scandalized. And I'm not going to get into a whole thing here, but I'm just going to say like, just know if that happens, I personally am most likely coming from a place of ignorance. It's been 15 years since I've seen Tropic Thunder. 100%. And when she brought that 100%. up, there's actually some good points there. Um, I don't, I don't really try to mess around at the beginning. I don't know if it made it on a show. We talked about Ozark. I've never watched that show because it's too violent and there's too much cussing. There's too. Well, much, and I, you know. I certainly haven't watched it since I've been Orthodox. No, 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 no. And I think a lot of nor us have, have I watched Tropic Thunder since I've been. Orthodox. A lot of that stuff has been thrown out the window. I just remember the very, very funny parts about <laughs> Robert yes. Downey Jr. with an actual <laughs> black guy. Talking about the yeah, struggles of being fantastic. black and like it is the, the, <laughs> the joke there is so it's just so wonderful. So but yes, you bring up a good point. There's a lot of blasphemy in that movie and there's a lot of things him using blasphemous phrases and, and being ultimately incredibly vulgar. I, I, I correction taken. I actually think you brought up some good points and I just wanted to put that out there. So if there is a movie. I, I'm speaking just for myself because I don't want to speak for my other guys on this podcast because they can speak for themselves. But speaking for myself, if there's something like that, I want to just say, forgive me. It's been a long time since I've seen a lot of this stuff. And if someone points something out to me, then I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, you're actually probably right about I'm, I'm probably never going to watch that movie ever again. Like, I, it is just a whole bunch of those movies I'll just never see again. You know, well, I mean, I'll tell you, Andrew, there's probably almost anything that I say on this show. If somebody points it out to me, I'm probably wrong about some aspect of it. Most likely. Like there's know. probably there's probably something that I have said where I lack wisdom. It probably every single thing I say every single day, if somebody wanted to cr- scrutinize it, I will. Ju- I'm just going to go on the record and say, yep, I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong about some aspect. Who, you will definitely it? find some aspect of something that I'm saying, even right this second, if you yeah. want to scrutinize it that far. So go ahead. Who, who Father, was it St. Ambrose that on his deathbed was like, anything I've been wrong about, I renounce? Like, was, was that? <laughs> that's him? it. Yeah. That's it. It's like, <laughs> that's I, it. It was the West. Yeah. Anything on my deathbed. I think it's St. Augustine, my, actually. It's St. Yeah. Augustine. Thank you. St. <laughs> Augustine. Anything I've been wrong about, I renounce. Like, I yeah. say I renounce that. it. If, I... <laughs> if it was wrong, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I don't really know. <laughs> For someone as opinionated as I am, I'm wrong a lot. And it's shocking a lot, how often all the I'm time. wrong. And, you know, I really do I really do like being wrong and to some degree. It is a wonderful little reminder that I'm not God and that I make mistakes. And it's actually a huge weight off my shoulders because I'm like, Agreed. 
you know, I say this about a lot of stuff. I don't have to be right when I'm arguing and not that I do, but if I were to argue with a lefty woke, whatever, it's, I don't have to be right. I don't care. Like, yeah, you've got the fossil records, whatever. I still say whatever, whatever. And I don't really have to be right at the end of the day about this kind of stuff. The church is the only thing I got to be right about. And luckily, all I have to do is kind of just adhere as much as I can to the teachings of the fathers. Anything else is up for fair play. I don't really understand. Boom. Yeah, I'm 36. I've never been very far outside the Midwest. I'm not very smart. So we're good there. Thank you very much, everyone. For Thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>